13th. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the March 11th, 2020 uh, workshop of the Scarborough Town Council. Uh, joining us today are members of the Ad Hoc Community Center Committee. Uh, before we get started, first and foremost, I wanted to thank everybody that is across the table from us. Uh, this is a group of volunteers. They are not elected officials, and I've personally witnessed hundreds of hours that you have all put into this project. So I can tell you personally and from the other six on the council, we greatly appreciate the work that you've put in. It's been fantastic, and um, I've had, we've had a chance to preview this, and it's, it's incredibly professional and informative, so thank you. Uh, the structure today will essentially, we're going to hand it over to the Community Center Committee. We're going to allow them to do their presentation. You're going to complete your presentation in its entirety. Uh, and then the council will ask you clarifying questions, any questions that we may have. Uh, then we'll have some brief discussion. And we'll open up to the public. The public is going to ask questions through me because uh, you guys aren't elected officials. So I will screen the questions, so to speak. And I'll take them if I can and kick it over to Matt Tonello if it makes the most sense. So presentation, questions and discussions from us, questions and discussions from the public. We hope to wrap it up in two hours, uh, so we'll, we'll try to uh, stick to that as much as possible, but at the same time, if it's fruitful, we'll continue as long as we need. Uh, with that, I'd like to just quickly go around the table for all those in attendance to introduce uh, everybody so we know who we are. I'm Paul Johnson. I'm the chair of the town council. Jean Marie Katarina, town council. Don Hamill, vice chair. Ken Johnson, council. Uh, Matt Tanello, uh, chair of the Committee. Matt Scyther, committee member. Amelia Kurtz, committee member. Sarah Boone, committee member. Stacy Newman, committee member. Isia Doe, committee member. Denise Smith, committee madam, member. Kevin Freeman, committee member. Tom Hall, town manager. Uh, Peter Hayes, town council. John Clucci, town council. And with that, I am going to hand it over to Matt Tanello. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, so we're going to be presenting on the screens. Um, I trust that the council and Tom have uh, done an initial look at this. We are going to try not to read from the slides. We're going to try and do some summaries. Uh, hopefully, this will uh, this will come out well on the, the live cast and on the, uh, the recording. But I did want to, before we started, I wanted to thank the committee for a rock star committee. Um, this, what we got for a product here was far beyond what I expected. Um, it was far beyond what I think any of us felt we were going to be producing at the end. It was kind of an evolving process that uh, really took shape about halfway through when we, after we got the survey results and things started coming in, then we had some clear direction and it was, uh, it was great working with everyone. And uh, we had some great committee members who will be able to talk through uh, the presentation. What we're going to do is we're going to be passing it off between a few different folks on the committee those who were leading some subcommittee efforts, and they'll be presenting those parts of the, the, uh, the information. So with that, so we started off uh, back in September with a charge from the uh, town council to evaluate a community center that was uh, perceived to be wanted in the town um, without very much definition as to what that community center entails, uh, nor did any of us know what community centers were supposed to include in them. Um, we were asked to look at two different types of uh, delivery models. One, a developer delivered model, where the developer is to build the facility for us under our specs or requests, and then lease it back. And then we were to look at a similarly programmed facility but on a self-built model on a town-owned piece of land, a generic town-owned piece of land, nothing very specific. We looked at a few options. And they were to compare the financial impact or models of both of those options and evaluate uh, which, if, uh, if the town council were to move forward, which ones they should pursue uh, and whether discussions should continue with the, the, uh, the developer or pursue a different path. A couple of the things we were asked to do was look at prior efforts that had been done for studies on community centers, uh, asked us to look at the desired components, design layouts, the financial analysis, and um, we met between September of 2019 through January of 2020, mostly pretty much every week with a few weeks off here and there. 
So uh, next page is just a summary level of what of the folks we just introduced. I believe everyone here is except for Patrick O'Reilly. So if anything goes wrong tonight, <laughs> you know why. Um, everybody else is here, yes. And we had some uh, subcommittee members. Uh, I guess I guess we can move on to the next page here. So um, if we look at this nicely done graphic uh, that Sarah created on her own, um, which we were all impressed by, it, it yeah. takes us through the uh, the sort of history of, from 1978 of when the community center first was uh, thought of. Uh, talks about a 2001 proposal for a 30,000 square foot community center that was not approved through 2005 through a YMCA proposal through 2006, uh, 65,000 square foot building which didn't solidify funding uh, through, through 2014 when there was a proposed hockey venue proposed for one of the uh, town parcels and then through 2016 when there was a facilities master plan completed which came up with a uh, was this the uh, so the, the facilities master plan identified a couple different areas where a community center might be placed on the municipal campus and it identified that community center as a five to ten year outlook need or sort of target in the, uh, the master plan. Uh, which leads us now to our effort that, that came up in 2019. And we first met the first night. Um, I believe we, we did discuss quite a bit what, what we should do to come up with the different program needs within a, within a community center. And we very quickly came to the conclusion that none of us should be the drivers or the deciders of what program elements need to be in a community center. So we sprung off into a uh, survey effort to try and get as much input as we could from town members and other people from other communities uh, as to what they could see as an ideal type of community center. Uh, and I think EC is going to take us from here into how we implemented the survey. All right. So I think we approached the survey with, you know, setting objectives. What information exactly are we trying to collect before we went into drafting the questions? And, you know, at first we wanted to know, is there really any interest? Do town residents think we need a community center? So that's one of the questions that we put in the survey. Uh, we also wanted to know what's the demographic of the potential members of a community ser community center. Um, in addition to that, what are the types of things they would be looking in a community center? What amenities are they asking for? And then also, how should we pay for it is the big question that I think a lot of people cared about. Uh, we, we were able to draft a 14-question survey, which we distributed online and in paper form. Online, we used uh, several different modes. We um, got the assistance of community services, which we fully appreciate. Um, they put in time to drafting something through a Survey Planet tool, which they were able to provide links on the community website, town services, or sorry, the town website. We also distributed through Facebook pages, group pages, um, and a lot of direct emails as well through um, the committee members. For paper copies, we made those available at Town Hall and at the library and of various uh, members, distributed them to different businesses throughout Scarborough. We kept the survey open for about two weeks, and um, in the end, we were very happy with the response rate. We had over 1,800 responses to the survey, which in comparison, we were looking at um, the comprehensive plan and saw that there was uh, about just under 600 responses, and that was open for a month. So we were very excited to see over 1,800 respondents to this one. Uh, of the respondents, about 94% of those were actual Scarborough residents. We did try and reach folks outside of Scarborough because I think there would be demand for bordering uh, towns that actually wouldn't have the, these amenities available to them. So we wanted to see if there was interest um, outside of Scarborough as well. And 
the, the main question that we used to determine supporters versus non-supporters was question five of the survey. And I'll just read this out, so just in case you don't remember. The town of Scarborough is considering the construction of a community center, which at minimum would include the following amenities. Fully accessible, flexible community space for meetings and parties, space for seniors, teens, and childcare, and a multi-purpose gymnasium. Do you support constructing a community center as defined above? Yes or no? So if you selected yes, then we put you in the category of a supporter of a community center. No, the opposite. Overall, we had 77% supporting a community center as defined in question five. Next was looking at the desired amenities. We had um, a question in there that offered a dozen or so options of things that you would find in the community center. We asked respondents to rank them um, top five. And of the <coughs> options available, swimming facility, multi-purpose gym, indoor walking track, fitness space with equipment, and child care room for before and after care were the top five that were selected. And I just want to note that this graph is showing um, weighted responses. We also looked at the responses without weight, just <coughs> giving each one an equal. Um, and the same five amenities came up, um, maybe in a different order, but it is the same five. So if we move on to the next page, uh, we also tried to address funding. Um, this is a very important issue that I think all residents are concerned of. Um, we offered three options, and knowing that we didn't really have any financial data at this point, we really couldn't offer dollars, but just uh, a high-low kind of option. So we said, would you prefer lower user fees and then a maximum of 30 cents added to the mill rate, um, a moderate user fee with minimal impact to property taxes, and then the last option was a relatively higher user fee with no impact to property taxes. So we did have 43% select the lower user fee, 44% selecting the moderate user fee, but overall, of the resident supporters, 92% did say that they are willing to pay a membership fee to have access to these amenities. For those that we have put in the category of non-supporters, they, they did offer up several reasons why they did not support a community center, including that um, there were other priorities of the town that should be the focus at the moment. Um, they believe that the cost of a community center would be greater than the benefit. They wouldn't use the community center or they're already members of another facility. We had many comments received. Almost 2,000 comments came in from supporters and non-supporters and we made an attempt to read through them all and kind of group them by common themes. So uh, I'll just mention some of the top ones. For non-supporters, I think, again, taxes and tax burden came up quite frequently. Um, a lot of the respondents felt that this should come to a vote, a town vote. And then also there were concerns around the town debt and spending. For those that were supporting the community center, I think there was just a lot of general <coughs> comments of, you know, it's time, you know, it's time, I've been waiting for this, I'm very excited for this to happen, and then also other ideas for amenities that we should think about to include in a community center. That's it for So um, now that we had collected all of these survey results, um, and, and they certainly were robust, um, and, and very positive and support, showing a lot of support for the community centers. What we wanted to do was go ahead and take a look at other communities that had similar demographics in some form um, and what they had done. So we used three tools primarily. One is back in May of 2019, there was an intern here um, in the, at the town that did a wonderful uh, recreation center study and looked at 15 municipalities. And so, um, the it was a it was a great report, very thorough, and it provided a lot of information about demographics of the towns that it served, 
the costs associated, the usership, member fees, and all of that. What was really helpful in there was what we wouldn't do. So that, you know, to have that information early on was very helpful. We also ran a study um, through the NRPA, which was able to um, target a pinpoint here in Scarborough and give us information based on the demographics of people in our area. And what was interesting about that, the greatest takeaway there is that um, our surrounding communities, our community and surrounding communities are above the main average and national average for activities that, that they're interested in and that they spend money on on an annual basis. So that was very helpful. And then um, as we kind of got into this and, and saw the amount of data we had, um, it really seemed prudent that the next step would be to get a professional objective opinion on all of this information. And so um, it was at that point that we requested the feasibility study and working very closely with, with Barry Dunn's um, team of professionals. We had a really great workshop with them where everyone on the committee was involved. They um, really came at it from every single direction possible, met with every, you know, the design committee, the finance committee, everything. And um, it was, the, the team that we had was particularly skilled in this area and just had tons and tons of uh, good information. So. We did receive that final report, and you have that as well on March 1st. And um, while not everything correlated exactly with what we came up with, uh, it's just full of useful information for us to change our thinking in some ways and validate other things, um, both pro and con, on the project. So while the Finance Committee was hard at work getting the third-party opinion from Barry Dunn, on the facility, we were in parallel mode of, we started the, the effort through a serial mode of identifying what the facility should look like as, by going through the survey, coming up with an initial scope, and we knew that with our compressed timeline, we needed to do multiple things at the same time. One was bring Barry Dunn on to start looking at the program we initially put together, and at the same time, <coughs> continuing to speak with the developer about the programming that we uh, would like to see presented based on a cost model that they were going to put together on a space by space basis. Um, so if we go to slide 17, we looked at the developer built model and a self built. Uh, we based the design on which the developer put their initial programming budget against uh, based on the survey data. So all of the spaces that were positive in the survey data, we included those in the facility. Doesn't necessarily mean that that is exactly the facility that is going to be built or will, was uh, going to be moved forward, but it was a way to establish a scope and program that on in the sort of uh, best case scenario, if we could get all of this, the spaces we wanted, these would be they. Uh, we then put a similar program together for a self-built model which actually required additional square footage uh, for the self-built because there was shared space uh, for back of house uh, entries, uh, some common area spaces that could be shared with the developer model that allowed a little bit more efficiency on their program, whereas we had to add about five to 7,000 more square feet uh, to accommodate entry area. So although the programming was the same in, in, in the sense that it served the same purposes, the self-built model had to be a bigger, a little bit larger building. Um, we utilized the survey data to identify the types of spaces, and we used a couple different tools to come up with uh, how they would lay out. Uh, I have, in my work, we have an architect who worked on uh, a programming model that uh, is essentially a spreadsheet that identifies spaces. You attribute different square footages based on those program areas, and then we came up with little rectangular boxes to determine what those different spaces were so that we could arrange them how we wanted to in our design for the self-built and the developer could most efficiently arrange them uh, when they were going to propose their design. Uh, we also looked at some other precedent facilities and we looked at also the Wentworth gym to sort of model the size of that. Uh, we looked at the Edge Sports facility in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Uh, 
which is part of the development team, and we looked at their pool to sort of come up with a pool size that they would most quickly be able to price and come up with a model for us on. It wasn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be, it didn't have to be that size, but it was just sort of the one we thought we would get to an answer much more quickly. Um, we go to 18. This is the list of spaces that predominantly made up uh, all of the program areas. Uh, I could read them to you, or you can read them on your own. Or you could look at the sketch. Uh, one of the more, uh, more uh, debated topics uh, internally was the aquatic center. Um, if we go to the next, the next slide, uh, this came up quite a bit in the survey. Uh, we debated internally as to whether this was becoming more of an aquatic center than a community center. Uh, we decided that it was what was asked for, uh, and we ended up having actually two pools in the facility. One, a competition pool to address the high school and the middle school swim teams, and also a potential user for a public, excuse me, a uh, private group of clubs in the area that was interested in potentially being a lessor of the, of the facility. Um, and then we had to also look at the sort of uh, learn to swim programs, the zero entry, the sort of younger child and the older population um, exercise in pool, which requires a different temperature uh, in, the, in the pool. So it sort of lent itself to being a two pool facility. Um, again, highly debated internally, highly debated externally in the community and um, and was priced the same way with both facilities. So in the end, it didn't, it, it just, uh, the numbers are sort of driven by, a, a lot by, by this piece of program. And you'll get to see that a little bit further on in, uh, in the financials. So I'm going to talk about the Downs proposal. Um, although <coughs> the first thing I want to say about the Downs proposal is this information is information we've got from the Downs. <laughs> so, um, you know, we'll, we'll answer the questions that, um, you know, you may have on that based on our knowledge of what the Downs has, has told us, but you know, they're the people that can better answer <coughs> specifics on that. So the first um, is the information we got from that is just the location, uh, which would be adjacent to, um, in, the, in the Downs area, co-located with the EDGE sports group. Um, and sports group would be the building manager and operator of the ice rink and turf field and some of the other facilities that the Downs uh, would house. And the, this proposal would have Scarborough Community Center um, in the same structure. 22, the schematic layout. Um, again, similar to what Matt said, this, this was a conceptual layout um, sort of based on square footage for pricing purposes only. This is... This is, even from the Downs, this isn't their proposal necessarily for the layout of the facility. Um, the information they provi provided on financials um, was really based on square footage um, only. Um, it doesn't include operating costs, common area maintenance costs, escalation, revenue projections, offsets, other things like that. It's really just a square footage of this facility. And one of the really important things that we talked about a lot is that we want to be clear, this represents no, this is what the, you know, this represents no negotiation, which we expect would go, would go forward, but is beyond our, our, our charge. So we took uh, their numbers for what they were um, and put them in here. So if we go on to the uh, so we just talked about the, the program that was priced and uh, designed out for us by the developer. A uh, little bit more specifics on where we chose to model our self-built facility. Uh, we took the campus master plan, and there were two locations identified in the master plan that was done in 2016 where a hypothetical future uh, community center might be placed. One was the ice skating pond and the other was the tennis courts. So we identified both as being having generally sufficient square footage of footprint to accommodate the size building we were looking at, and we felt that they, uh, they were both good candidates. 
Um, we chose two so that nobody could say to us that we chose where to put it. So there's a little bit of a defense there to <laughs> keep us out of the, the, the lens of criticism. Uh, we also chose two facilities, uh, two locations that were proximate to the large parking area adjacent to the Wentworth School. Um, I did mention there were some differences in program between the developer built facility and the one that we we priced uh, internally and that uh, one of the major differences I didn't mention was that we assumed that parking would be available at this lot for the community center because it in theory has a different demand cycle for parking than the schools so the larger demand for parking for a community center would be off school hours and whether that was a proper assumption or not, we do know that that would be something that would have to be looked at later. Uh, we do know that the developer would probably need to price into their uh, facility the cost for parking and um, circulation around the site. So would have been a reason to drive the cost a little bit higher on the developer built facility. A uh, couple of interesting notes. However, we also did have to penalize the uh, our, our self-built facility, one with the replacement of a maintenance building, which was would be uh, overrun by our facility at the ice skating pond and the tennis courts. In that alternative, we would have had to replace. We assumed we would the project would have to replace the tennis courts. Both were accommodated in the pricing. <coughs> two options. So I guess I've already covered a couple of these. One was we had to ca carry some additional square footage. Uh, I just caught, talked about the tennis courts. Uh, we actually, although this does say that we would displace the skating rink, we didn't actually price in a pond replacement somewhere else. Uh, we did plan for uh, stormwater management systems that would be required for the additional impervious surface for the building, uh, but we didn't include a new pond hockey rink. Uh, So I think we can move on to uh, the way that we looked at the costs for the self-built facility. We had the benefit of having two superior construction management <laughs> firms on the committee. Uh, Martini Northern and Consigli Construction brought the estimating horsepower of each of their departments. Uh, we did independent cost exercises where Martini Northern priced the facility that was drawn and my estimators priced the facility that was drawn, and we brought the two estimates blind to each other and reconciled, and we were unbelievably close on such an incredibly vague program that we delivered. <laughs> um, it was actually, I thought there was some collusion going on somewhere. I thought Kevin must have looked at my computer, but he actually did his before we did ours, so uh, it was quite amazing. Um, we had some variable variability in uh, a number of soft costs, but in the end, it essentially we were in the same at magnitude within five percent of each other. And then we took those numbers for the construct first cost uh, construction costs, and we handed them to the finance committee for those folks to, to our folks here to start running numbers. So the finance subcommittee um, is made up of myself, Amelia Kurtz, and Patrick O'Reilly. We work closely with Todd Souza, the community services director, um, <clears throat> and uh, Councillor Clucci sat in on all our meetings and advised. Uh, we decided to build up two complete performas, one for the community center, and one, or one for the self-built community center, and one for a leased community center. Um, rather than, than pick apart each detail that we thought would be different between the two, we Figured let's let's look at the whole package of one and the whole package is the other and make it as apples to apples as we can. Um, so we did that and and operationally, both scenarios are comparable um, in a in a number of ways. You know, for example, a lifeguard's going to cost what a lifeguard costs. Doesn't matter whether it's lease or self built. Um, the primary drivers between the two scenarios um, in this in the Leased scenario, we have a lease payment. Obviously, we have CAM charges, which is common area maintenance. Um, it's shared maintenance costs uh, with the other tenants um, or tenant and uh, real estate taxes, uh, among other things. And um, the lease of FF&E, uh, fixtures, furniture, and equipment. 
on the self-built side, uh, the primary cost drivers um, that differentiate it from the lease side is uh, just the cost of our own money and the maintenance. Um, one thing that's important to note is with the self-built model, uh, the construction prices uh, that matches went over are today's dollars, so those will obviously uh, go up every year. So one thing that's important to consider that Amelia mentioned earlier um, is, as you all know, we uh, engage with Barry Dunn uh, to help us with the market analysis and operational analysis. Um, we realized pretty early on that once we were working with Todd trying to put together this budget that a lot of the revenue um, hinged on membership counts and membership fees, which without deep knowledge of the Parks and Rec market, um, it, there's a lot of uncertainty in those projections. So we engaged Barry Dunn. Um, they uh, presented their report to us a week ago. And we are in the process now of plugging their projections into our performa uh, to update our performa and get um, new numbers. So those are not ready yet, nor have we had a chance to discuss it as a committee. Um, but we are in the process of doing that. <clears throat> so the 30-year lease option that was uh, presented, um, it would be a 30-year term uh, with an initial payment of $2,349,500. Uh, it would escalate 10% every five years. Um, on top of that, we estimate about $518,000 in <coughs> CAM charges. Um, that es estimate was actually from the developer to escalate about 2% every year. Um, and we also estimate about $97,000 a year for the first 10 years to lease um, FF and E, and then we estimate that will go down to about 24000 a year uh, thereafter. Um, <clears throat> with two things that we didn't include in our performa, because um, they're difficult to quantify, but I think worth noting, um, are some advantages to, some financial advantages to the leased option. Um, one is the potential lower cost in utilities. Um, so obviously there's some efficiency there for occupying the same building. Uh, in particular, um, the developers talked about building a heat exchanger that would take the heat from the ice and pump it into the aquatic center so we're not generating our own heat for the pool and we're not wasting the heat from the ice rink. Um, and another, another advantage, um, we believe that revenue uh, would likely be higher in the downs because of the location. Um, it's more of a centralized high traffic location or soon to be high traffic. Um, so th that's not in the performa, but I think it's worth noting. So the annual deficit for the 30-year lease option. Um, this is the year-to-year -year deficit starts out around 1.6 million. As you see, the, uh, the shape might not be what you expect, um, where it goes down and goes up, goes down. Uh, that's because of the five-year escalation uh, so it starts at 1.6, and the lease rate's flat for five years, while membership um, revenue uh, would grow gradually. And then after five years, the escalator kicks in, and we, we bump up and we go through that cycle for uh, six times throughout the lease. Um, overall, 30-year deficit would be almost $50 million, which is an average of about $1.6 million a year. With the self-built option, um, the, the finance costs are the, the biggest advantage over the, uh, the lease. Um, part of that is because uh, the developer's facility obviously needs to be bankable in order for them to get financing. They need to be able to um, show the bank that, that they're actually going to make money. And part of that comes from markup, which we are paying for. Um, uh, in addition to that, we can, as a town, can finance at a much lower rate. Um, and the third thing is uh, there would be a tax bill, because um, it's a triple net lease, um, that we'd be responsible for. Now, obviously, if we pay a tax bill, we're paying it to ourselves, but because it's um, in the downs and under CEA, we wouldn't be getting all of that. Some of that would go back to the developer. Um, whereas with the self built option, we would have no tax bill. <clears throat> so
So the self-built option, year-over-year uh, -year deficit, um, the graph's a little bit different. They actually start out very close, around 1.6 million um, a year in the first year. Um, the reason this graph actually goes down over time is that uh, the debt service payment on the bond um, is front-loaded, so it actually starts out high and goes down over time. So uh, this graph, for, graph reflects that um, almost one-to-one. -one. Uh, so over time, once we get to around year 20, uh, the community center would actually, according to the projections, pay for itself. Um, that would be our break-even point. Uh, because our debt service payments would have finally come down to to a place where we're actually making more than that back, um, and after that point, uh, as they as the debt service continues to go down and eventually gets to zero, um, the community center actually becomes profitable. Um, over the 30 years, uh, we estimate a total deficit of about 11 million, um, which is an average of 370 thousand a year. So this graph looks at both the, uh, the lease option, the town built option, and also the as is scenario. So we took the community center budget as is if we did nothing, if there's no community center, um, which <laughs> operates right now at about 90% cost recovery. Uh, so we, have, we estimate that, that deficit would, would um, grow at about you know, 3% a year, uh, starting at the current deficit of around $260,000. Um, so, what's important to note about this graph is clearly the lease, um, you know, it, has, it just continues to go up, whereas the, uh, the town built facility actually comes down because it's front loaded. Um, so, over time, the town built facility, in theory, if the projections are accurate, would actually be cheaper than, um, than doing nothing. Eventually, it would become profitable enough that we actually make our money back on the bond um, and actually see a return on our investment. So, would you mind dropping back to page 30? I would be going to. I'm going to bookend something here that Matt started with um, that we just added this last night that may not have been in the packets that were sent out that we felt was really necessary to. Um, to Put a finer point on, and that is, uh, we we reviewed over the last week the Barry Dunn report, which was incredibly informative. Um, it didn't play nice. It critiqued us in areas that we needed critiquing, and it it made suggestions on what areas we should make some changes. Uh, two of the areas that they had identified were uh, possibly overly optimistic in terms of our revenue streams was our membership percentage of the town and our membership fees. So what um, we had made a decision that I pushed the committee on very hard. This was another debated uh, situation where we were, we were debating whether we should deliver our report ahead of the consultant report or we should wait for the consult or, or we should wait for the consultant report and let our analysis um, sort of converge with, with what they've, they were recommending. I pushed hard to deliver a product that was based on the committee's opinion. Um, it was also based on some membership models that we put together, felt we were feasible, um, but clearly identified that we needed some critique on it and we needed some expertise. So when we decided to deliver the report, we, we discussed internally that it was a draft report and it was going to need a revision uh, specifically to the pro forma because we did not have information from the developer on the operational cost completely for an entire they did not yet have a good season in their other facility to to recommend how much they were spending for energy so we sort of plugged that in with a with a an estimation and we had the two variables for revenue which were percentage and rate at which we were going to charge for memberships um, we do need to make a revision of that so that those revisions may adjust those graphs that you just saw uh, related to the overall costs over time. They will both go in the same direction. It's not going to make an inversion where one becomes more favorable than the other. It's on the revenue side, so that's something that we drive, um, essentially on how well we operate the facility, how 
uh, inexpensively we run it with the and, and on the cost side that we control uh, how much how inexpensively we run it with how efficient our personnel is so um, we didn't see that we would have hugely different revenues in either of the locations although we did identify that the, the developers site might attract a higher quantity of members who might be out of town uh, members because of the the business uh, the business sort of located uh, around it so just wanted to make sure we didn't miss that fact it's it's uh, this was this is representing the information that we had when we uh, developed the report uh, we were we did talk briefly incredibly briefly about other funding op options and uh, we started off saying that we noticed that operational costs we can go to the next slide I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Operational revenues expected to be insufficient to cover ready, cover the operating expense. Uh, we we asked the town about what other funding models there might be for this. Uh, these options were presented. We did not spend any time analyzing them or vetting whether they made any sense. So I'm punting on this one, and <laughs> we will move to the next page. In addition to um, different funding options, we looked at um, alternative lease options. Um, if you will think of what we, we did as a committee as a spectrum of self-built versus the lease as proposed, there's so many options in between um, those two points that certainly um, it, it appeared to the Finance Committee that there would be perhaps some points along that spectrum that would benefit the town and work for the developer. Um, the lease to condo, bonded condo, and lease to own are all detailed on page 29 of our report. And, um, you know, if, we, if there's any questions on those, we can certainly look into that. But um, those were just ideas right off the, the bat that seemed like would be, um, we would recommend that you kind of take a look at those as other opportunities. In the end, if the town, you know, the town should end up owning the property, and, and it is possible in many different ways. So we'll go to a quick recap of the committee's charge, which I'm not going to read back to you what we've already told you we did. I think we were uh, successful at completing all of the items that we were asked to complete. As we were putting the report together, we identified some areas that might require future study that were not part of our scope. Um, we did not look at other options within the town for a potential facility location for our community center. Uh, we did not uh, we did not look at multiple different options of pricing, uh, many different configurations. Although we did look at an alternative for an additional gym, and we did uh, I think that was the major component that we looked at. Um, we didn't go into providing an opinion on whether we should move ahead or whether uh, or the, whether, whether we would recommend to the town council they just move ahead with doing it or going to a referendum. That that falls. That's why you guys ran for that position. You get to decide that one. Uh, and then we didn't do any stress testing of the financial model to look at different ways that membership percentages would increase or decrease or uh, cause. Uh, costs like additional staff to run the facility, at what point we trigger another full-time position. We didn't get into that. That could fairly, with the financial model that was put together, I think we could, we could uh, very easily do it in the future. Um, mm. I think that's part of the, the next steps. So one of the things that we did want to um, at least discuss, and we've also discussed in our report, is sort of these things that we've called intangible factors. And the reason we've included them is because one of the pieces of our charge was a, you know, recommendation. And so, but there's a lot of intangible factors that could play into any recommendation. So we, you know, limited sort of our, I don't want to say limited, but we more detailed the financials of information for you, but spent a lot of time discussing some of these intangible factors and got a lot of feedback um, based on the survey. So we wanted to, you know, give this information to the town council. Certainly, there's many other intangible factors that you and others could also think about, but we just thought these were 
important things that should be considered um, going forward, and those include um, you know, boosting the town's desirability, increasing property values, sense of community among residents. And again, for this first page, this is in general, so this is just a community center, whether that would be uh, with a private developer or a self-built facility. Uh, creating a social hub in the center of town, promoting health and wellness, um, and improving access to athletic facilities, especially for students, um, and also, um, you know, a lot of the nuances in there. With respect to intangible factors for the least facility, um, one of the things we mentioned previously was that a community center in the Crossroads District could create more demand for membership. It's going to be easy walking distance, businesses nearby that could generate additional membership. Um, and the sort of, you know, converse of that is that a community center in the Crossroads location could help support the growth of that downtown area. Um, one of the other things to think about is that that facility could, would be built, seems like, more quickly, potentially, than a self-built facility, and um, engaging in the lease with the, uh, another thing to think about sort of the other way is that engaging in a lease with a private entity does carry other risks, you know, contractual disputes, failure, you know, financial <coughs> challenges, things like that, that if we're only dealing with ourselves are mitigated. Um, and then we have some other intangible factors uh, to consider for the self-built facility. Um, is locating on the campus might um, provide better access for school and after-school programs. Busing would not be an issue, um, which would you know help finances, uh, sort of practicalities as well as reducing the town's uh, carbon footprint. Certainly meets an unmet need with respect to before and after care. Um, Self-built facility would give the town better control over the process, full ownership over the asset. Um, and may offer economy of scale if built concurrently with some of the other potential new facilities that may be built. Um, on the other hand, uh, location in the municipal campus could contribute to traffic issues. Um, so those are some of the intangibles that we thought of discussed. We heard from members of the public, and so we wanted to share with them. And so finally, our committee's suggestions. Um, we were supposed to come up with a, uh, a recommendation or a gesture to the town council. Uh, we decided to uh, put a vote together at the last meeting where all of our members were there to uh, evaluate <coughs> whether we should suggest to the town council to continue to pursue negotiations with the developer for this facility. Uh, we weren't recommending whether they should pursue the developer or a self-built. We provided the comparison. It was, our charge was to make a recommendation on whether you should consider continuing to negotiate. We had, I believe, a nine to one vote or an eight to one vote. We had one dissenter. Um, the bullets below this paragraph, the, the heading at the, the top, were not developed at the time of taking the vote. We had a sort of a clean slate of of what our uh, our analysis looked like for the financials, but we looked at it and said the financials don't really make a ton of sense to us right now the way it's presented, and we couldn't all in say this looks like a good deal. So we said we really need to, as a group, come up with our own caveats that are those things that we think the town council should consider uh, if you were to consider going further. One dissenter uh, did not feel comfortable without having seen what those conditions were, which I thought was a very, um, it's not easy voting the mm -hmm. sole dissenter in a group that large. And it really, uh, I'm always suspect of unanimous votes, and I think it actually provided a great, uh, great uh, counter opinion because we had, I had a number of conversations with this one dissenter on the, uh, but in the end, we were able to put a group of conditions that we thought needed needed to happen, or at least you needed to consider if you did consider continuing on with negotiating with a developer. And we did say that we thought you should consider continuing to negotiate with a few of the following caveats. Um, that you take the financial results that we put together um, and use that as a basis for discussions or negotiations. Uh, I would put a 
one asterisk there and say that we do need to make a modification to our final financials before you take them and use them as a tool, it's just so we're all looking at the right numbers. Uh, that a, a space planning committee do a deeper dive or a more thoughtful look at how the spaces are arranged or uh, because we'll want to cut the best deal we can and make sure we've got everything that we really want in a facility if we're going to negotiate for a developer-built facility. We want to make sure we're not leaving anything, uh, any stones unturned. Uh, we should, uh, hopefully, you would look at other funding options. Uh, the, n the number of options that were presented by, by Tom and, and the other folks on the committee with the town. Bake sales are always good. Mr. Gucci has got two daughters that I know can bake like a champ. Um, that should close the gap, I'm sure, within just weeks. Uh, the uh, if if you're not able to find a common ground with the development team uh, to to look at continuing to discuss with them ways that we can secure space within the facility that they do plan to build uh, that's advantageous to our sports teams and our high school and middle school kids because we the number of times that we sat back and discussed within our within our group how how much we are driving as parents, how far we're taking kids, the stressors we're putting on the on that side of the population of the community for for um, for their after school needs. We talked at length about the needs in the town for a senior space, uh, for a teen space, and we also talked about the fact that there really isn't a a lot of options for community use, uh, drawing the town together where there's a sort of single place where there's a lot of uh, community environment. And those were some of the intangibles that we saw. So it would be great to sort of get some influence here on maybe finding some way to get some community space, even if it's a smaller segment of the space of the developer uh, built facility with, with whatever they do decide to build. And <clears throat> uh, if, if so going back, if, if you do end up uh, negotiating a, a facility exclusively for us, that there should be a consideration on having a operational uh, side arrangement put together with the developer so that maybe you can privatize some of those operational costs that we predicted would be full-time or part-time employees of the town. Um, and that's, that is, uh, I do want to make one other sort of, I'm going to riff here for a second on after reading the consultant report, uh, there was a lot of criticism in the report for um, some of the spaces we chose. Um, they were very good. There were some interesting com components in there where they suggested uh, maybe some additional fun features in the aquatics area, like a uh, what's the word? Zip lines. <laughs> Zip lines. <coughs> and a uh, what was Climbing the vortex. The vortex. There was a vortex. I don't know what it is. It sounds cool. I thought it would be a great feature. Um, <laughs> just because it's got a great name. But although they did suggest adding all those features, there was also, you will see, some criticism about whether it could get funded, whether our financial models would work, and whether we should look at more ways to offset costs and produce a lower costing facility. And <clears throat> it's interesting because it's a consultant report that's clearly written with one, with one lens of how to maximize use, how to get a, a, a component in a facility that maybe isn't available in other parts of this area, but at the same time saying, well, you don't want to probably build those expensive water features. So I asked myself, uh, one, of the, one of the missions that would, we were asked, or one of the things that we were asked to think about was not trying to compete with local businesses while we're developing a program. Well, businesses tend to build things that make money, uh, Gymnasium or gyms or workout centers are not super expensive to build and you can get memberships and you can fund them and they can be profitable. Um, we took that and kept a very limited size uh, facility for the, the workout space because we didn't want to compete and throw a, a privately funded model out there against a lot of businesses. You have to ask yourselves, and this is a big political gesture here, of what is a community center for? What should we be building if we're going to fund it with taxpayer dollars? Should we be paying uh, for the construction of a facility that is profitable and making money 
or approaches profitability, or should we be addressing those program spaces that don't exist out there because they don't tend to send profits to the builder, like senior centers, which don't tend to be great cash cows, mm -hmm. or aquatics facilities, or other facilities that are rare uh, in the private development model that could be funded through taxpayer dollars. That's, that is, again, a question for your folks. Uh, clearly uh, worthy of a referendum at some point to decide on how we spend our tax dollars going forward. But um, you know, it's a, it does provide an interesting look at the, the sort of water features that were, other, that were mentioned and some of the other uh, spaces that were suggested that might be not available in the local market that might attract more people uh, to the facility. So with that, I think we've concluded our presentation. And uh, I think we are going to open up for questions. Yep. Yeah, so at this point, I think we're not going to debate amongst ourselves, so to speak. We're just here to ask questions of the committee. And once I feel like that has finished, we'll let members of the public either ask a question if you make a com or make a comment. If you do make a comment, realize you're just making a comment and we'll move on. If you do ask a question, then we'll attempt to answer said question. Uh, so for our portion, are there any questions on from the council? Mr. Hayes. Yeah, I'd like to go back to, and just, just so I understood it, on, on the analysis where you had the CAM, so it was, you estimated about $500,000 in CAM costs, <coughs> but you said real estate taxes were in there? Yep. Mm -hmm. But it was a $35 million bill because that's what it would cost us to build. The taxes at the current tax rate would generate about 600000 in real estate taxes. So either, so you only had five hundred in there, which, so, oh, how did you account for the real estate taxes? And two, there's two components of that. The developer would pay the real estate taxes to us. Uh, no, would pay it to us, then would charge us it in CAM. But because it's a CEA, 40% of that would go back in the CEA payment, which would be about $240,000 a year. Were those numbers? How was that all? Like, I didn't see those in your numbers and how you accounted for them. So there, I, I'm not sure which appendix it is. Um, there's the... Uh, the real estate tax bill is broken up um, between us and EDGE, um, so we're not paying all of it. But, but I mean, I, I'm assuming if, if, if the stick built that we were going to build was $35 million, mm -hmm. presumably that's the value of assessed value that would be that we would be assessed in our, in our CAM. Because their, their building value is going to be, it's going to be much greater. So it just yeah. feels like we're missing... If, if CAM is only 500000 and the real estate tax bill is 600000 alone, and if there's 240000 that we have to pony up because of the CEA, it feels like that we might be a little short, which if you're going to adjust the projections, that may be a worthwhile adjustment. So I'm trying to remember the numbers exactly. I think, it, I think it's actually more like seven, maybe even seven fifty dollars uh, for the entire building. Um, the real estate tax bill, and I forget the breakdown exactly between us and Edge, um, but it's not broken down by value. It's bro I, I believe it's broken down by square footage, so that could be the discrepancy that that you're seeing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just trying to do the math. From yeah, absolutely. A from a construction cost. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that that may tweak the that that differential between the two models for yeah. what it's worth. Yep. I don't believe that there's any credit given or taken into account that the town is going to take a portion of that uh, in, in the model that, that they put together to this right. point. Uh, so that's the, this is what, as a, a leasee in this facility, this is the taxes that are going to get passed on to us. But there wasn't any accounting for, well, that's going to get paid to the town and then a portion is going to go to Right, but that, would be, that yeah. would be a cost of the lease, though, that should, should Those be would be things that, yes, I think. Should be in there. And that's, and that's yeah. not, it's, it's 240 thousand a year or so for 30 years it's about eight or nine million dollars which is not insignificant in, cool. the, in, the, in that delta that we're looking at right so if we're going to use your analysis to go back to do lease negotiations that should be part of the differential that we look at absolutely <clears throat> Councilor Gleising on that self-build model how many acres does the self-build model uh, how many acres is the self-build model? The footprint was 
about 60,000 square feet. So that's about one and a half acres of footprint. Uh, that doesn't include a undescribed, unquantified square footage for stormwater management, roadways. We put an, uh, an allowance in to, uh, without essentially like figuring out where everything goes, we put in a cost to build additional uh, features, roadways that come in, stormwater management. There's no actual uh, square footage calculation for what that's going to take. We didn't really engineer it. We just based it on... So you it, think it's the two or three acres? Yeah, it would... If, if you're not counting the parking square footage, yeah. which is would be a huge... Could, in theory, be burden to it, it would be about a three-acre parcel. Um, we've got a couple measurements in, but go ahead. Was it possible to put it where the basketball courts are, or is that not possible? So you went on the tennis court the, side. Was there a reason? Both. They were know. taking the basketball courts and the tennis courts, I believe. Yeah. Oh, they're they just referred to it as the tennis yeah. court site. No? Uh, basketball courts are across the library. Right. Uh, right. Oh, no. Simply not enough land to accommodate a building of yeah. the size there. It was too small. And those two locations came out of the master facility plan. They weren't roughed up by this committee. Ah. They were. Um, and the master facility plan actually has three, correct? It was three a third one, yep. but it was it was up here. I think it was actually on the senior lot. Yeah. Which yeah. would have presented a, another challenge. <laughs> well, the basketball courts are kind of behind the tennis court, so it's, it's kind they're of separated the same by a large of, wetland. Yeah, wetland. So that's what huge, I was going to say. Is there a wetland. wetland? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Do you see the standing water on either side of 114 yeah, yeah. all year long? <laughs> Any others? I have a quick yeah. question. Did you, in your operational cost, the fixed head counts to, to run the facility, did that reconcile with the consultant report? It was our expenses, or our um, personnel, um, numbers were a little bit lower than theirs. I want to say it was, ours were about 10% lower. Meaning more people, not, not salaries, but more people, more? Uh, yes, yep. More, well, more people and total yep. cost. And in the consultant report, the criticism on, or the, the, uh, the attention to some of the design features, do you, did you find them a value that if there were further negotiations, you may position it as a change in the design and the costing to the developer? Uh, I'd just like to point out that we have not had the opportunity as a committee to discuss the consultant report. So I think we're happy to answer questions to the best of our ability, but it would probably be one person's interpretation of that data versus a consensus that we have arrived at okay. as a committee. I'll answer one of them because it was sort of something that I drove. Uh, the pool was identified as being too large. The competition pool. Um, again, we, we chose the size pool that matched what Edge built in Massachusetts and uh, essentially just called it a day. We knew that there would be a real design committee if you ended up building a facility that would be spending a lot more time. We didn't spend, we spent right. time moving blocks around right. on a, just to see if we could get all of the spaces put together on a footprint and it wasn't there was a lot more time spent on the financials sure. and the survey, and our, our our effort was to just see if we could block them all together. Okay. But thank you. So I had a question, um, and I was really intrigued by uh, your, how you explained you went through the vote and how you, you know, deliberated as a committee. Um, you know, and I think these things are, you know, these things are tough. I think sometimes that uh, there's an expectation, you know, for a, a clear and unequivocal recommendation, a single, simple answer. So I have to, have to confess, I was kind of hoping for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, hope dies last. That's why you guys are all there. Thank you very much. Here. But my question is, I, you know, you, I'm playing back and forth, and maybe I'm looking for something that isn't there, but in your detailed report, you said, continue to discuss the opportunity with the developer, provided the lease costs can be advantageously negotiated. And then your final recommendation on the slide deck here is, 
The committee recommends that the town council continue to discuss a potential lease arrangement with the developer provided the lease terms are advantageous, advantageous to, to the town. So it does seem that you've kind of come, come almost all the way in the camp of saying pursue a lease option without really ruling everything out. Is that, do I take that right? Is that kind of, you know, or you're still sort of, there's a lot at play and there's other factors and there's more work to be done. I would say there's, it's what I said before, there's a spectrum here, Don, of the lease as proposed and a self-built. Yeah. And the question that we grappled with as a committee, the, what we understood our charge was, do, can we make a recommendation to the town council that, yeah, it's worth pursuing that conversation? Absolutely. At this early stage, to, to say, don't even bother with the lease, it could never work because self-built is this, or, you know, the lease is what it is, you've got to go the way, it just, it wouldn't have been prudent. So, um, I have to say, having been at those meetings, and being the one who actually made the final motion, I don't feel that the committee was steering one way or the other. It was that, obviously, there's some real benefits um, to the lease, there's some drawbacks to the lease, and at this early juncture, um, why, why wouldn't you? pursue that. I think one of the things that uh, is fascinating about this is that the two polar energies here is that the survey results were overwhelmingly, yeah, we want we want mm -hmm. this thing. This is what the residents are saying they want. Um, one of the findings of Barry Dunn that was really telling was the actual demographics that are going to be increasing in the town and, and um, you know, adults and the need for a senior Citizen Center or Senior Center. So, um, you know, there's there's just so much support. And then on the flip side, you have just the incredible caution financially of that the, the um, taxpayers of Scarborough feel. And so how do you mirror those two? How do you get those together? And to me, it would be pursue every option okay. and look along that whole spectrum. Great. Fair enough. Thanks. And I did have one yeah. quick follow-up. And this is a process question. Um, and I felt that when we did this, we were really experimenting with a new approach to engage and involve the public in a, in a very meaningful way. And I, I want to thank everybody on the committee uh, for the untold hours you've devoted to this and the outstanding work that you've done. But my question is, is this something uh, that we should do again? I mean, is this something that we should consider as a viable way of vetting big questions for the town, um, you know, and if you had any suggestions for how we might do it differently. So I know it's a kind of multi-pronged question, but would, would, would we, should we do this again? Take the fifth. <laughs> the chair is pleading the fifth, so. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I think I think so. absolutely. I think that there's a lot of um, expertise and perspective mm -hmm. in this community that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. And so to um, not invite that is, Question, you know, I would question the motive of, of not wanting that feedback. So, um, but on the other hand, people say they want to be <laughs> participatory and then they don't s sign up. So, I, for speaking for me and my own experience, I would encourage additional opportunities for the public to weigh in. So, to, to, to just so I don't go on record as completing the fifth. Oh, no, it's <laughs> over. I'm sorry. Please it's, it's, next <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, it, it's quite a bit of work. Uh, mm -hmm. It's quite a bit of volunteer time. Yeah. However, you chose this committee. You guys did a great job. I don't know what, it, <laughs> but the, the 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 variation in experience and expertise that was across it, and uh, Amelia just mentioned about mm -hmm. participation. I think we got unbelievably par great participation uh, among everyone on the committee. It was a really there was there was dispute, there was debate, there was. Uh, Laughing, there was candy provided <laughs> for some of the meetings, uh, but it was it was a well. I think a carefully chosen committee is super important, and making sure. I think I would allocate more time mm -hmm. yeah. to this kind of an analysis. Yeah. Um, I think we were we felt extremely stressed uh, mm -hmm. with trying. There was we were back to back meetings every single week with some weeks two meetings a week. Uh, even in subcommittee stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the finite was really good, even though our finite kept getting more infinite. But um, you know that it was a four month <coughs> commitment or a four month commitment it was very with a specific charge with specific yeah. deliverables. For me, that was mm -hmm. very. Right. 
Thank you. I'd also urge the future committees to decide earlier where they want to get its consultant effort. Mm -hmm. I think we, we probably yeah. triggered that too late, but it was not knowing what you didn't know until you were like, well, there's some risk in some of these numbers. <laughs> and we get some feedback. So I think we could have could have pulled that trigger a little earlier, but we were a little overwhelmed at the beginning, too, of how we were going to pull it all together. Thank you. Councilor Hayes and Councilor Gleistein. Yeah, just just a, a follow, just a quick question. I, did I hear that with the the site location, the lease, that there is there's a concern about parking, or there's not a concern about parking? There is not a concern in my mind that the developer chose a way to provide parking within the lease structure. Uh, we got a lease proposal at a price that, in theory, provides the town ordinance required amount of parking. Um, and do you think that's adequate? I mean, I, I, I just picked up on a comment saying that you had some concerns about the parking or, uh, or not. It was, it was a difference in the way it was modeled. So uh, the, our pricing model uh, did not include provisions for including the costs to create a parking lot because it pre-existed for the self-built self self facility. facility. But, so, yeah, so my adults. specific question, though, is for <laughs> The edge facility, you're assuming there's adequate parking to service the the, the services that we provided. That there. was the requirement. Yeah, okay. Um, we no, I, I just thought there was no answer to that question. Okay, thank you. Councilor Glassman. Big question. So on the self build, you said it was 60,000 square feet? The footprint. The footprint. And then what is the footprint, it's got two story, two story building two in some areas, so it goes to about 78,000 yeah. total okay. square feet. So in the end, was the square footage of the different pieces comparable to the 72,000 that the yes. down, so in yes. the end, it, it was a comparable size? And it was a comp program. We had to okay. build more square footage to accomplish to the same program they were able to accomplish in a smaller square footage. And, and they had shared spaces with other... Area. But the component spaces themselves were the same between the two. Right. Okay. We, we asked for a net square footage for each space, meaning take right. out the thickness of the walls and the common, mm -hmm. the, 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 the hallways, and uh, they were able to, they, they delivered a, a program that, that delivered that net square footage, ours netted to a gross that was higher. And so, Matt, I think you said that the um, the consultant report kind of said that you guys said some membership fees were too high. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I read a couple of times there was a lot of information between the two reports. Um, but, um, I mean, do people look at other membership fees around the area? Because, I mean, because they picked ones, you know, out of state and all of that. But I noticed, like, they the consultants had said um, 270 for a couple pool membership, 338 for non-resident, and Cape Elizabeth for a couple charges 469 with 516 for non-resident for pool only. Westbrook charges 384 per person, so for a couple that's much larger. And SOPO, if you were to be a non-resident and go 200 times, it's $1,200 for pool access. So it seems like their fees were kind of coming in. I mean, had they actually looked at, and I didn't get very far, I didn't go to Portland, Biddeford, why? So it seems like at least looking at those three, that at least a couple of their numbers seemed low to me. So. Yeah, I, so we actually based our numbers on the numbers that we That's saw. We in the more local. Okay. Yeah, which, um, sort of makes which is why sense ours were higher yeah. than, than theirs were. Um, but maybe by the time you thought you had more members and they thought you had less members, did it kind of balance out? Is that so? Uh, the the membership fees, the consultant's report was off by a little bit, but the um, the membership counts was was really um, the greater discrepancy. Which, if if you all remember, was was a big reason that we asked for the the money to engage the consultants. Um, there's so much uncertainty in that. Um, that our projections for membership counts um, were were considerably higher than theirs. Okay, but just to you know, there's so much in the reports. But you know, we talked. We haven't, as a committee, talked but a little bit about um, you know sort of microcosm. You know, and there's different things that 
I don't even know that I reflected in the very down report, for example, if a big business comes into the downs that might have a lot of membership that, you know, you, you can't model because that particular town doesn't have that. So there's, there's still going to be, even with the two reports, there's still going to be other things that will have to be looked at in terms of membership numbers, I think. Right. And I, I, it as a committee. I know with the survey, you know, people said a combination of membership fees versus taxes. Um, but, you know, kind of one of the things with the taxes is that, you know, so let's say it's 30 cents, let's say it's 60 cents, let's say it's $1.20, you know, whatever it actually comes out to be on the mill rate, that's only, you know, and that doesn't get you access to the facility. So your taxes go up everyone's taxes go up and then if you want to use the facility you've got to do membership in a higher fee right so so the actual cost to use it is higher if you don't use it um you don't have you know you don't really have much i mean you're paying increased taxes without anything so my question was did you guys do any thought on like a break a break point membership like what you could charge you know to fund it even more, but still, you know, at some point, if you say it's $10,000 to join, no one's going to join, right? But did you, did you think about like a break, you know, no. a point where you the would... the maximum you could charge? Yeah, it's kind of the maximum. I think we did. We, d we didn't really, I will say we were designing the survey, I mean, on the survey committee, that was one of, and that's why you'll see we have the low, moderate, part of that was, is how do you ask people what they would pay when they don't know yeah. what they're getting, right? So right. I'll pay, you know, if I, I might pay more for these businesses. So because there was no way, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, we went with that, you know, low, moderate, So it's something, model. as we defined it more, we can maybe ask again yes. what, what you would be willing to pay. Exactly. And if it, yeah. right, what, if it exactly. includes these amenities. And I think, I think um, it's also important to note that we did discuss um, that there might be potential other opportunities to fund scholarship memberships mm -hmm. or, um, you know, discounted memberships based on age or family size or income. We didn't get into the weeds on that, but we did note that those were things that should be considered. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think there is, a, there's certainly opportunity to do that. Um, and then as Stacy was saying, it's, it's, you can't put a number on a membership when you don't know what you're getting. Um, and there's one other point I was going to make and now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. Councilor Glancing, I right? will say yeah. that Todd Souza was quite uh, involved in, in this analysis, mm -hmm. uh, understanding what the local rates are, yeah. uh, also having vast professional experience in doing this, and I know he's acutely aware that there's a price point at, at yeah. which you turn business away, and so um, he's not here, but I, I, I think he would say that that was part of his yeah. input into this conversation. Oh, yeah. and, the, and the Barry Dunn report also goes into detail of all the privately owned uh, gyms around town, and it has a breakdown of what they what they uh, have for services and how much they cost mm -hmm. and it was uh, far more than what we looked at I remember the other thing I was going to say one thing that we also noted from um, some of the survey comments that we thought was kind of an interesting conundrum um, was a lot of people or, or I should say there were many people that expressed that they would like for a community center to be accessible to all age levels and all income levels um, but they weren't sure how to do that in a way that also paid for the community center. So I think that that is certainly a point that is um, mm -hmm. ripe for discussion. Great, thank you. Councilor Gucci? Yeah, I uh, just want to thank you all. I, I was really proud to work with this group. Um, and you didn't agree on everything, and you kind of dueled it out, and I think that really resulted in an excellent product. And this is... Uh, in my mind, anyways, a, a fantastic start to making an informed decision, right? You've, you've laid out a ton of facts, you've done a ton of analysis, and you've got a conflicting report now from a consultant, and that helps you. I, I, nobody likes to say that, you know, somebody disagrees with you, but uh, it helps you triangulate on what the right thing for our community is, and um, so I, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the work that you've done. Uh, the theme that I was hearing, uh, uh, maybe this is a question, uh, we didn't necessarily start this the way we had planned, right? We had an opportunity that was presented, and we're like, yeah, we need to figure out if this is a good idea or not. If you had to do it over again, would you change something, I guess? Yeah. We would have done the consultant report first. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So that the pro forma wouldn't have to be adjusted right now. That we would have the accurate numbers. I mean, that was, 
that was the hard part. I mean, the survey is great, but it's still only, what, 1,800 out of 20, 22,000 in the community. Plus, each individual could take the survey. So it wasn't per household. It wasn't 1,800 households because each individual, husband and wife, could take the survey. Uh, so that, that presents the conundrum, like Sarah just said. It, it becomes a philosophical question for you guys to answer as to whether or not, you know, what should the community be providing to the community? Or what, are you running a private membership-driven uh. fitness center? Honestly, I'm the dissenting vote. And I felt halfway through the thing that we switched from a Scarborough community center to a Scarborough fitness facility. And, you know, I, I honestly, the numbers don't make any sense to me, which is why I had the dissenting vote. Uh, but it's more than that. I just felt we lost that community center part of it. Uh, I mean, we're using just practical things that I could just see happening. One, the whole parking issue is not resolved. I mean, if you're using it as a senior center, you've got to have parking in the front for buses to come and from the state home, whatever, handicapped spots. And then what happens when they're running a, a tournament in the ice section? I mean, coordinating between what the town would be doing and what the private edge would be doing is going to be a challenge in itself. So as you, from a scheduling point of view, a common lobby, uh, we were advised, I don't think, I don't know if Nancy is here, from the library that uh, seniors avoid the library from 2.30 to 4.30 because all the kids are coming in. Um, she, you know, that, that made me think. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of practical situations and I just felt we we switched from what our original intent was supposed to be which was a facility that was the Scarborough Community Center for example one lobby what do what is this thing called who decides that if, if it, there's one there's one lobby just how how is that practically going to work so you know I I just felt we we moved out of what we were originally intending and what our charge was, um, it would be great because obviously it can be built faster than, you know, than a self-built perhaps at this, this time with everything else that's going on in the town. But um, plus, I think we underestimated a lot of costs with the, the aquatic center. Basically from all the feasibility studies, the cost recovery on aquatic, it, it, it's it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. But yet, if there's no aquatic center, are people going to join? Especially if we're not having a fitness center equal to what they can get from Foley's gym or, you know, I don't know if he's here, but, you know, he came to one of our first meetings uh, because he put a lot of money into that, you know, and that facility is right there by the downs. So the aquatic center becomes an important part of it. You know, but it it's it's a money it's a money pit. You know, uh, it takes a lot of lot of money, and uh, you know, I just don't see it paying for itself. I mean, if you if you, I keep getting the emails from the Wellesley Center. It's just nonstop different things that they're doing. I I, I don't know that 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 we're ready for that, or that 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 our area could can do that, can bring enough to make that aquatic center. Uh, pay for itself in that. If you looked at the, the rates, the least, that's the big, that's the big part, that's the big part of it. Um, on the other hand, as Jerry Dunn says, you could put more bells and whistles into it and make a unique Denise, I'm just going to, just, just so like you're have, making your individual case, which I think is great, but I think that <laughs> yeah. you should probably do that yeah. one on one because you're presenting as an entire committee, so yeah, I, I'm sorry. not trying to, but I think the way we're structured this, I just, yeah, I, kn I know for a fact all seven of us would love to talk to you. I just think it, oh, we got to keep no. it in the context of. Well, if I can make just yeah. one thing. That's uh, just pretty much it. Yeah. Um, there was a point where I looked around at this committee and I found that uh, I was one of two senior citizens on the committee. <laughs> and I'm not sure when that quite happened to me, but I'm 62 <laughs> years old. But I think whoever put together this committee 
has tapped into the next generation of leaders. Right. And that's important because not they may not be the actual leader, but they reflect the mindset of the next the, the next generation here in town. The town that has the, the people that have kids in the school that are requiring these services, that are reflective of the trend that's going on all across Maine, all across New England, all across the country to build community centers. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why Wyndham's looking at one right now, why Standish is looking at one right now. And maybe a lot of people wish they could have been where South Portland was 20 years ago, but we're not. And, but, I, but I think whoever put together the mix on this committee, when you're going to do future committees, I hope that it has the mix of, of age and talent and expertise that this committee has had. Because it's really been quite a, for me, the best part, the, the really the learning part for me and why I've been as quiet as I've been on this in this particular <laughs> session. Because there really were some wonderful people, very knowledgeable and very skilled on this committee. So I want to get to pub I want to get to the public's comments and questions. So are there other questions specifically from the council that we feel like need to be answered from their presentation? And I apologize. I just it's an hour and a half, and I have a two-hour deadline. And I don't have a question per se, but just very quickly, um, I just want to don't give me that. No, that's I, good. Is I just wanted to thank you for the work you guys did. You it, you came out with much more than I expected when I, we first discussed, oh, let's get a group of citizens. And I, like, I love your feedback that you think we should do this type of a group for other projects in the future, so that, that's really good. Um, and I'll just say that as far as I'm concerned, though, whatever we do has to make absolute financial sense uh, for this town. So this is a great, gives us a lot to think about and work with. So anyway, now you can call the public. Can I just speak one, one yeah, brief yeah, yeah, comment to yeah. that point? And I, to tie that together with what Denise was saying about her concerns regarding the community center feeling like a place <coughs> for the community, I think that that is something that we kind of struggled with as a committee and that I would, I would suggest that the town council really take that to heart mm -hmm. to determine what you believe this facility should mm -hmm. look like at, right. at its core. Um, there were the... the Survey feedback gave us some very specific direction on what amenities the citizens of the town would like to see in a center like this, which is why we designed the facility that we did. Um, but, but there is also a, a strong concern about how we pay for it and including elements in a center that would be revenue drivers that might be a little bit less um, inclined to be perceived as community space, but would help offset some of those costs. So I think trying to balance those three things uh, is is a job that I'm glad that we don't have and yes. that, that you have. <laughs> and, and just very again, quickly, it needs to be intergenerational, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do, whatever we decide to do as a town, it needs to be intergenerational because I do think that um, as a community or we don't have enough interaction between mm -hmm. the little ones and the elders and the in-betweens and the people my age, and we need that, mm -hmm. so. Clarifying questions, anybody? Yeah. Members of the public, anybody in the public would like to get up and ask a question or make a comment? Mr. Rispera, is there anything you would like to say to add to this? No? Can you just my state name. your full name and address, please? Yeah. My name is Richard Hayes, 21 Martin Avenue, Scarborough. Uh, I do realize these people put a lot of work in, in this project, and, and, and that's wonderful. <clears throat> I'm against the project uh, from the standpoint of it involving any taxpayer financing. Uh, I, I would, my first preference would be that the developer and Edge uh, build what makes sense to them with working with the town and the town should have some input with the developer as to what facilities should be in the, in this building and that it be a, a private uh, industry function and it be fee-based if you want to use the facilities uh, you you pay for it uh, i don't i am um, <coughs> A thousand percent against any tax dollars from 
uh, the town uh, being involved to finance this project. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Because that's a comment, we're not going to respond to it. You guys don't have to respond to it. But it is much appreciated. Is there anything else? Uh, Rocky Risbera, Crossroads Holdings. Um, I didn't really come prepared to say much tonight. I, I would like to thank the committee. I, I do think they did a, a tremendous job. Uh, I was at a lot of the meetings, and there was a lot of work uh, work done, a lot of dedication, uh, and, and I appreciate that. I think you really put out a very professional report. Um, from the down standpoint, let's figure out a way to make the numbers work. Um, we we feel that the, that the, uh, the desire is there for this this type of uh, facility for this town uh, I've, I've felt it for many many years living here as long as I have and uh, we're committed to try to figure out a way to make this thing work for everybody so that's all I have to say do you want to stay on the hot seat for a minute and answer sure. any questions sure. does anybody have any questions for Rocky since he's up anybody Freestyle all day, all day. <laughs> I'm uh, Katie DeLorme. I live at 17 Williamsburg Lane. So um, I'm a PT by training for 35 years. So I um, I really support certainly anything that we can do to improve the health and of our communities. Um, and um, I was also on the board in Freeport when we went through mm -hmm. our two capital campaigns for community center. So I lived personally through a lot of these discussions, and I greatly appreciate everyone's efforts, the, the council and um, the committee on this. It's a huge amount of hours. It's a much larger town, many more things to consider. Um, one of the questions, I had two questions. One was for you is, if the town decides to do um, nothing, I was having a hard time trying to tease this out, and that we put it on hold or look to leveraging with some other partner, what are the downs going to build no matter what? Uh, the answer to that question is we, we probably will build a facility. Uh, we've got a couple of different ideas in mind. Um, it, the facility that we would build would be a private facility. It would not really be a community center. Um, maybe some of the needs might be met, uh, but it primarily would be a sports center. With fitness, all of that? Yes. Yeah, okay. um, and so as a follow-up to that, the question I have is um, it seemed like we – the town has gone to having something where we would have more of a direct, you're going to build this out for us, versus has there been, because I'm new to this, I didn't see the survey, and, and I apologize for that earlier on and some of the earlier iterations. Um, have we looked at just leveraging as um, the town? Would we get, instead, could we have, like, reduced rates, um, and preference, preference time for the ice, the pool, things like that. Have you looked at that as a committee or as the town yet? Uh, yeah, go I ahead, I was going to yeah. say, just one of on our suggestions page, it's like 44, um, we did say that it, should the town decline to pursue a lease, we think the council should look at um, potentially getting those advantageous scheduling and the things that you're speaking to. Number, so number we did four, talk yeah. about it, and we do think that that's something the town should consider. And I, and I can also tell you that the I, Rocky, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the superintendent, I mean the athletic director of our schools are in current negotiations with the private side, which is the edge facility mm -hmm. for preferred ice time, locker room, sponsorships, what have you. So what we're, it does get a little convoluted, but there is a whole separate side that the schools, Rocky, I think I'm saying this correct, right? The schools have the opportunity to lease the locker rooms and brand the locker rooms with the Red Storm, and they have preferred ice time. And that's a whole separate negotiation between the school, the school system, and the Edge private facility. So, okay, so there's yeah. so there's kind of three then options that are out there: um, town uh, built. Kind of, I would say what Rocky, I, I would say what Rocky said at the mic. That I would, I would imagine that would involve the school having at least having the opportunity to have a contract with what Rocky said. Which, in which case, we wouldn't be involved. That would be the school negotiating ice time. So, just the school, not open. No, you wouldn't negotiate something for. I'm all sure we residents. could. I'm, I'm sure we could. We're just trying to deal with one thing in front of us at a time. <laughs> 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 um, and then, um, um, 
I did appreciate it. I tried to read through and understand as much of your 153-page report as I could. <laughs> um, I kind of got lost in performance. Um, but I um, appreciate the effort. Um, sure, I think so. one of the things, and it's more of a comment, that we went through a lot of late-night discussions, long discussions, debates, um, is um, because it was coming from the community center in Freeport, is just what someone else mentioned is, truly, what's the purpose of this? And um, the other thing that, um, you know, that we were a community center, and that's what we were trying to build. And for us, we really looked at, there were a lot of needs um, that the town of Freeport was trying to address. Um, same thing, we wanted the same things, the teens, the children, the seniors together, to try to get as many needs met in the community as we could, but what, as a town, we could afford. And, inst and what we came up with was a community center that was a community center with the space and the meeting much scaled down. We had the fortunate of having Y and a lot of fitness facilities, but as do you, except for the pool. Um, and that what we decided in the end that it, um, was their ways to actually leverage the partnerships that we already had with social service committees, with um, you know, other businesses in the community that we had brought in to get some of these other needs met. And it did start a yearly event where we brought in a lot of different agencies and businesses, and we got together and did a combined needs assessment for the community, and people were able then to pony up resources and talent and support. You know, and whether that can exist in this community, Foley gives discounts for seniors. I know he gives people free access if they need it. He doesn't turn people away. Are there, you know, I just encourage to kind of look outside the box and leverage what we have. Thanks. You're welcome. I'll take that. Yep, I'll take that last one as a comment so we won't respond to it. And yeah. Councilor Gleistein with a question for Rocky. Yeah, you know, it's quick. So I think there was a couple of different forums where you said you are putting in a pool. I just wasn't clear what you just meant when you said it's a private facility, which makes total sense. Ice is edges of deal, but are you putting in a pool? A pool would be part of it. Okay. Thank you and thank you. Sir, did you have a comment besides the question? Hi, my name is Joe Doherty and my residence is 28 Greenwood Avenue. Uh, I'm here on a couple of different reasons. One is uh, I'm probably the major investor with Mike Foley at Foley's Fitness Center and we do offer uh, Free access. We offer uh, opportunities for seniors for Silver Sneakers and Prime and uh, all the other programs. Renew Active, I guess United Health calls it now, um, and all of that. And obviously, we offer to to the city. We offer to a number of different communities. We've got corporate memberships going, so we've got a very good thing going at Foley's. But I'm not here to to go against anything that the town is trying to do. That's not what Mike and I represent. We we are trying to form a community in our own right uh, down there, and I think we're we're making pretty good headway. We've got uh, you know, approaching 3,000 members, uh, which is, you know, pretty amazing. And uh, the community has helped us build this thing out so, so much, uh, you know, from the town with everything that went into that, and they continue to support us. And so it's been a, it's been a great experience for me. I've been gone uh, running other businesses, multi-billion dollar businesses for 40 years. And so uh, it was good to come back home. Um, from the county, you probably can tell that. <laughs> but uh, but in all seriousness, you know, my my daughter now is uh, lives here with her with her son, and uh, and we're uh, we've been welcomed back here. But the biggest reason I want to talk about is I, I think that this can be done in in joint effort. We're not like I said, uh, Foley's is not against the effort that's being done. We want to be a part of it. We want to be a part of the community. We want to contribute. But I do agree with the last statement that was made. Is there's ways I think that we can work together. So. We don't uh, go against investments that have already been made. Significant portions of people's personal wealth uh, have been installed here. So I think there is a good way to partnership. I know I wasn't part of this, but I did uh, read the preliminary review of that. It was a very well done report. I agree with all the positive comments that were made here. Um, so it was good. It was a good review. Uh, but I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to partner as a community, as a business community as well and as uh, people who want to take care of our kids and have kids compete at the highest levels or just have fun like they're supposed to have. So whatever Foley's can do, I know I'm speaking for Mike, Mike's still working, I just left, uh, but we want to be a part of this, you know, whatever it decide, you know, the, the community and the citizens decide to do, Foley's wants to be a part of it and, uh, and we'll stand side by side whatever happens, okay? 
We'll take that as a comment so we won't respond. Any others from the public? Isia, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Thank you. You can't go on the podium. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I got a couple comments and then a question to the committee. And thank you for all your work on that. Um, Can you state your name, please? Paula O'Brien, Pondview Drive. Um, I agree with the first speaker that I don't think that it should go on as new taxes because there's a lot of seniors in town that would not use it. They're including, you know, like my mom. She's 84. She doesn't. But my mom isn't the only one. There's a number of seniors who just. They're at the age where they don't go anywhere, they're comfortable staying at home, blah, 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 and can't afford more taxes. Um, the Sorry. The schools, um, there's been talk about a new K-2 school. Well, then what are we gonna do with the three neighborhood schools? I mean, one of them could be converted into a community center um, and also the, <coughs> the last comment I have is during the last survey that was taken there was about 1800 out of 20,000 that responded and in past elections when there's 1800 or less that have voted it's been criticized that it's not a large enough percentage com uh, voters that went to the polls um, the question that I have is the survey that was done with the 1800 respondents now that there's costs associated with that, is the survey going to be put back out there again to the public with a cost associated at it? Because the first survey didn't, you know, you couldn't because you hadn't done all the work yet. But are they going to put the survey back out there now that there's a cost associated with it in case it does reflect on the taxpayers? Paul, I think I'm, I'm going to actually answer that. Just, okay. uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, after the adjustment that they make, uh, with their pro forma, they fulfilled their charge. So unless we come back to them to ask them to do anything, this committee is going to be disbanded. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I think that the cost associated with it right now is not. This is obviously this is what we're basing basing off. I would say that we're not even in a position right now to. Um, if the Downs folks were smart, they would take all this information and hit us with something else, right? So I don't, I don't think that we're making the decision right now based off the numbers that are on the screen. So, mm -hmm. um, but if we got down the road, you know, I, I ever, there's been pretty well established as possibly a referendum if, if it ever got to that point. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I, I guess on their committee level, they're being relieved. They've been. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They're all looking at me like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, and they have done a lot of work yeah. as, yeah. you know. So there's no plan to do that yet. Yep. But, but we don't even know what the, the cost is yet, so to speak, because if we are, if there's some negotiation or some counter proposal, then mm -hmm. there's there's more discussion to be had. Okay, thanks. Larry Hartwell, 5 Colby Drive. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this project other than what's been s said tonight. I want to make sure that I understand that, that the to build and to, to lease are the same. We're talking about the same development. And in one price, you folks have come up with 11 million, and the other one is 50 million. So I don't know how. Can you clarify your first question about it's the same development? Oh, OK, the, the facility is we're talking about the same facility, similar facility to build or to lease? Uh, we developed a program, sort of, so a needs request. We want X amount of square feet of gymnasium space, this much square foot of pool space, and we put that to the developer. They came up with a design that accommodated all of our yes. requests, and then we came, we came up with a separate design that included all of those program areas, but had to build more square footage. So it, it delivers the same program, same number of spaces, same square footage of spaces. Essentially, yes, it's the same thing. It's a different building design, <coughs> different solution in both cases. Okay, and Rocky's confirmed that they're still doing a pool with the edge development, irrespective of what we do. A lot of people in town have wanted a pool, so that would, that would uh, certainly take care of that. We, as Paula said, we've got those three schools that maybe we can use those for, for space. But 11 million versus 
fifty million because i understand if it's eleven million it goes out to a vote if it's fifty million it's a lease and four people on the council can can make that happen is that correct well on this council or any council in general <laughs> that's correct. That's so yeah. but I, I, yes and i think the difference is too i think and, and Matt, I think those are your. That's the, that's the incremental cost, isn't it? That is that's the total thirty deficit. years cost. That's what it would cost the town over thirty years um, in each scenario. Your trust is the deficit. Right? It's the, the deficit. deficit. Yeah. yeah. But but actually the, the the but the building cost if we built it is thirty four ish. Oh, somewhere. correct. Yeah. And then and then the lease stream, just the lease stream is is a hundred million or something. I think. I think What's it's around 90, um, 90 for the million. lease, and it's around total in debt service payments, I think it's 54. So, so the delta between the two projects is about 40 yes. million? Yes, but that's just comparing the lease payment against the debt service payments. Um, right. So there are obviously a number of other financial um, yeah. factors. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a, a, oh, about a 40 million um, difference either way. Okay, and why would we be advocating for that to go that route when there's when it, we've got to divide like the Grand Canyon here on the costs? So well, that, I'll I'll clarify. We, well, they're we not. They're. I don't. Yeah, go ahead. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't advise to go. Right. I understand. That I understand. We said we should yes. negotiate so that it's more favorable. Mm -hmm. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah. That's why I was oh, putting the pause on it. But, <laughs> but Tanel didn't pick up on it, so it's fine. <laughs> we did, but we did recommend going at that rate. Okay, we I'll, did not. I'll have further yeah. questions. Yeah. <laughs> Be clear about that. Is not Mr. Chairman, I wonder if I could clarify something. Mr. Hartwell made a statement that I I'm not, I want to make sure I understand it for everyone else. Rocky just mentioned that they are intending to like they build a pool as part of a private facility. What I don't understand is what access would town residents have to that facility. And, well, I, I think it's important you clarify that. Yeah. Uh, our intention with, with a facility, uh, if, if the town is not participating, we will go find users that will pay the most to use the facility. So we'll go to all the area towns, all the area schools, colleges. We've already done all that. We, we, know who our users might be if it goes private so, so you're I, I wouldn't ban say the town from doing so we wouldn't be no, in we're that not mix. banning the town we're but what I'm saying is there would be lab. we would lease all of those facilities out right and we'd be in that mix right we lease space now from other pools you we lease space now that's, we'd be that's in that correct. mix right so you, you could be a lease that's, that's true but it's, it would leave sports, little sports time teams. for public access that would not be a focus of ours for public access we would right. try to get the, the right. clubs and the schools to to take those like spaces. with the ice that's going to be team correct. based right correct so yeah. with the ice you know there could be some public time at some point but it would be after you know we leased all that time out right. you know as best we could would i be able to buy a membership possibly would the town be able to negotiate or bid on or propose <coughs> for pool or ice time just like any of the other communities could. I think it's a possibility. It, it could it could fit the model. Uh, but but likely it, you know it'll go out to other other users. Are you going to disadvantage the town against other I don't proposals. intend to disadvantage the town. Well it's it's there's a nuance here where it sounds like we might be competing like a business for any other space. I, of course you would. <coughs> Thank you. My membership just went up. <laughs> as long as you're not disadvantaging. Okay. Are we good? Any other questions <laughs> from? <laughs> Since we have ten more minutes, does um... <laughs> actually no? I think I think it's okay. Why don't everybody in the committee give one last two minute? I think it's important your individual voice if you want to quickly say two minutes. Anybody before we close it up? No. All right. With that, like I said in the beginning, in all in all seriousness, like I said, I, I witnessed about seventy five percent of your work. I trailed off a little bit towards the end, uh, but thank you guys. We are forever indebted to you. So, yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Nice work. 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 Nice
What's that? Right here, free memberships. Right here, free memberships. For life.